Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the premiere edition of Pop Shop, your one-stop destination for everything entertainment. I'm thrilled to be your guide on this amazing journey of glamorous, you know, world of lifestyle, gossips, gist, bands, entertainment, and of course, music. Uh, so whether you're a movie buff, uh, you're a music person, a music junkie, or someone who just loves to have fun, okay, I've got you right here on pop shop because i will be taking you from the latest trends controversial topics uh red carpet highlights beauty tips exclusive interviews with your favorite celebrities all of these are many more for your listening pleasure right here but wait there is more we'll also be diving into thought-provoking discussions we'll be uh, sharing our thoughts on some of the hot topics trending on the social media platform and of course i will be bringing in uh you know some guests and it promises to be an amazing one Today on Pop Shop being the debut edition, I will be taking you through the latest controversial trends. I mean, some of these stories uh, have dominated the social media space and people are really reacting. They've been getting a lot of buzz and I'll be taking you through most of them. So the first story on my list today is Bob Risky. There's been a lot of drama. There's been a lot of back and forth. As regards Bob Risky, some of you call him Sugar Mommy. Sometimes I don't even know the best pronouns to you use he she or shim please whatever pronoun i use today just you know pardon me but i know you understand right so let's get to it um unfortunately for him or her shim is to spend six months in ikoyi prison ha with no fine option so i mean the socialite was sentenced on friday by uh, Justice Abimbola Awogboro of the Federal High Court in Lagos. And uh, as at the time she was arrested on uh, last Friday, um, it was uh, it was for spraying Naira notes. But I'm just thinking, ah, this is a Nigerian thing, no, because who doesn't love to spend and spray Naira notes? If this continues to happen, what will now become of our Owambe party? Because I'm just thinking. But then uh, the EFCC said that uh, as at the time of the investigation, she had also committed the alleged offense at some other event centers and parties at different times. They also, you know, uh, you know, prosecuted her for money laundering, but she appealed to that and that was taken off. But the main issue is, you know, uh, abuse of Naira notes, and she's going to prison for six months but then for me that is not the highlight people are wondering i mean is this really enough reason for you to sentence someone to six months in prison or there's something that the federal government is not telling us because even on the other hand i mean we have another socialite of recent who was also arrested and that is kubana chief priest for also abusing naira but then in his own case i mean he got a bail out he, he got a 10 million naira bill and people are like okay uh kubana chief priest got 10 million naira bill but then bob Brisky doesn't get any bill i mean for some weird reasons it's been in the news or she's been in the she has been in the news for so many reasons and this whole drama actually started from when um movie producer Eniola Jao, you know, announced Bobriski as best female, uh, best dressed female, you know, uh, during a premiere and uh, during a movie premiere. And uh, I think ever since then, the trouble has started. But I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, they've moved Shim from uh, Kirikiri to, uh, they moved, they've moved her to Kirikiri from Ikoyi prison. So Shim is actually going to be in prison for six months. Wow, I, I thought she was powerful. But I mean, my heart goes to her. She'll be fine, right? You're still listening to Pop Shop coming to you from the Radio Fabulous. You can call me Shay Fabs. This is where I get to I share with you some of the major stories, controversial hot topics of the moment. Uh, so, taking up another story, I mean, if I don't include this in my story, it will not be complete here. <laughs> Let's talk about the popular Nigerian clergyman, Odu Meji. Anytime I hear of that name, Abido Sheka. Which other one again do you know? Tell me now. Anyways, uh, we hear that this popular clergyman has released his highly anticipated single and it features flavor. And I'm just wondering, ha, a popular Nigerian clergyman releasing feature with 
flavor. Abido shaker. <laughs> Anyways, Walo Dimeji is, you know, popular for his powers, which he constantly, you know, boasts of in his various sermons. Uh, he also maintains a career as a musician. So while some of you are referring to him as a pastor, please do not forget to add musician to the tag. Uh, so in his latest efforts, uh, Odumeje, popularly known as Indaboski Bahosi, <laughs> he has joined forces with a Nigerian acclaimed uh, music singer Flavor for a new single titled Power. Have you listened to it? The song is really powerful, I must tell you. So on this upbeat single, uh, Odumeje, who pastors the mountain of Holy Ghost intervention and deliverance ministry. I know sometimes I, I, I watch some of his sermons, some of his you know ministration. I'm like, ah, no more food, they go that uh, So yes, I'm just talking about him releasing songs. And of course, a lot of people are also reacting to this particular story that they just cannot you know, wrap their head around a popular clergyman uh, singing uh, and you know releasing a feature with uh, a Nigerian music artist. I'm like, okay. I mean, like, how come? Imagine that the G.O., you know, releases a song with portable. Like, okay, I don't know, but it's just, our calls are, our callings are different. I mean, don't you think? But I mean, I've been listening to the song go, and to be honest, it's really powerful. Finally, about this next story, I'm actually happy about it. You see some of you that go on social media to throw people or to write whatever you think you can write because uh, come to my house now. Uh, come and beat me in my house. See, now they can come to your house and beat you. Even from the comfort of your house, you can be sued. They can come and arrest you. So you better be careful. Anyways, court has summoned five people who said Nathaniel Bassi fathered Mr. Chinwo's son. Ha, some of you, your mouth will put you in trouble. So, an Abuja magistrate court sitting in Wuse Zone 6 has issued criminal summons on five persons. Let me mention their name. Okoronko AGK, hmm, not them. Kinsley Ibe, DJ Spoiled Kid. Terence Eckert and Samuel Agozi for alleged defamation of gospel singer Nathaniel Bassi and Messi Chingo, including her husband. Uh, the summons is signed by the Registrar of the Court, Emmanuel Iyana, and they are to appear before the court on April 23rd uh, for alleging that popular gospel singer Nathaniel Bassi uh, fathered Messi's son. Uh, for me, it's their audacity. You. Like you don't have evidence and then you're coming on social media to spill rubbish like rubbish and you know this is like one of the reasons why some social uh not social media some um celebrities you know avoid having to show their children or their babies on social media is because of money storing spirits like this because how do i come up on social media to you know show and you know um to upload my baby's picture and then you say another person is the father come on now i mean at times we expect maybe because they are gospel singers you expect that uh -uh, now they are singing jesus songs they, they will be lenient they won't they are supposed to be gentle they, they cannot sue right Bagby. if you do anyhow you will collect anyhow the news agency of nigeria reported that the defendant recently alleged that popular gospel singer nathaniel Bassi fathered the son of messi chingo an allegation that went viral on social media and got a lot of buzz um well when i when i came across the video uh the pictures rather of the baby i mean that baby is so cute but for me i just felt ah to be honest, to be really honest, that baby resembles Pastor Blessed. That's the father. And you know, the baby has this mature look, but I was just surprised when people started saying, ah, this baby, this baby looks like Nathaniel Bassi. And to be honest, I mean, there's nothing wrong if you see a baby and you feel like, oh, this, this baby looks like, like a particular person. That is okay. But you insinuating that a DNA test should be carried out because you think that the mother, you know, got down with the person. I mean, come on, that is wicked. If they do it to you, how will you feel? So I think with this, um, I'm happy about this development and I really hope that it will serve as a lesson for some of you who like to throw celebrities because you think that uh, they cannot see you. Anyways, we've been seeing some videos surfacing on social media of some of those people that were running their mouths. Uh, they have served them letter. They are now coming up, out on social media to beg. I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. Nathaniel Bassi, don't answer them. Let them go to court. 
Hop Shop is still coming your way uh, from your TV. You've got the Radio Fabulous uh, on air. I've been taking you through some of the major controversial stories. Uh, so taking up another story of the moment, this one actually, mm, it's, it's tricky, right? To be honest, at first I was in, indifferent, uh, but when people started talking about it, I'm like, ah, you people, Sha, you, you really, really, you know, see things in little, little things, because I don't even know why this should be dragged, because if you were in that pastel shoe, you would have probably felt the same way too. Well, uh, there's been a public outrage over the way and manner a senior pastor publicly embarrassed a woman when he questioned her academic achievements while sharing a testimony on Sunday. Uh, so it happened during uh, a Sunday service that a woman took to the altar to share what the Lord has done for her. And you know, when I when I watched the video, uh, the woman you know talked about how uh, nobody has graduated uh, so far in her family, and you know. By God's grace, she's been privileged to, um, you know, pass through uh, a tertiary institution now, actually. And, uh, you know, she just went on and on. You know, I was sick. God came through for me. I had a BSc in law. And that was where the trouble started. Okay, BSc in law. Uh... I want to appreciate God for my life and my family. And I want to thank God for using mommy and daddy for our sake. I started the school. I want to do law, law uh, program. I started 20, uh, 2014. So I continue like that. And I want to thank God because during that time, I never lack of money to pay my school fees. Praise the Lord. What kind of degree is it? My medicine is MBBS. BSc, sir. BSc in law, sir. So the, the testimony is a lie. There is nothing like BSc in law. law you don't have LLB or BL. It's a lie. The testimony is a lie. Please go back to your seat. So when she finished what the Lord had done for her, well, I guess uh, the pastor wasn't convinced that, uh, I mean, is there anything even called BS in law? Uh, so there's been this back and forth as regards that story. A lot of people were not super impressed. Uh, they were not impressed about uh, the, the way the pastor called her out because, I mean, the camera didn't show it, but literally she was walked off the altar so it was embarrassing, and the pastor just felt that. I mean, is that how lawyers speak English? We are not faking anything here. When she started her testimony and she's talking law, I knew there was no, nothing like law. No matter how bad it is, it hasn't got to that level. They say you got a degree in law. What degree? BSc. Is there any lawyer here who has a BSc in law? From the way the woman spoke, you know, English wise, grammar wise, it just wasn't, you know, adding up because, to be honest, would you have a lawyer like that to defend you in the court? Answer the question in your mind. Uh, so, a lot of people, you know, tongue lashed the man of God and they asked for apology. In fact, some people actually, you know, did their findings. It was then I knew the Nigerians, ah, oh, my, you people, on a day investigate though you know when they really mean you and they really want to get to the root of issues they know what to do so people actually went to dig out and research to really know if this woman uh, went to now or not and fortunately for her i mean she didn't lie she actually uh graduated from now uh, i think they even found that because with the picture i saw they found out that she was actually or she is a police officer uh, but yes it happened that uh she actually graduated from the you know said school and you know a lot of people got angry that uh, i mean she wasn't supposed to be embarrassed like that and they called for uh, the pastor to apologize to her and that even if the pastor was going to apologize the pastor should do that publicly uh, because i mean she was embarrassed publicly as well and uh, later on in the day uh, the apology came but i guess a lot of people were still not uh, satisfied with the apology saying that um, you know uh, what the statements the pastor released uh, didn't even seem like an apology it was just a lot of shalaye you understand but to be honest what do i think about it even till now i'm still indifferent because to be honest you can't really blame the man of god can you i mean if you see someone speak like that bs in law it's not adding up you can't blame him but for me i would have just probably said maybe just maybe if you were not convinced you could have just mm, 
there are ways you do those things now. There are ways they do that in churches. There are some people, they even say, ah, thank you, yeah, thank you. They collect the mic from them. So, I mean, maybe he shouldn't have come out to really say, oh, you're a liar because you're still not sure. You don't have evidence to back that claim. So for me, I think that was like the, the little uh, mess up that I saw in that particular situation. But then, I mean, they already settled because later on we saw a, a picture of uh, the man of God with this, uh, with the said woman and the, you know, the pastor's wife. They snapped together and she also released a statement saying that, okay, oh, I'm not holding a grudge against my spiritual father. We've settled it and, you know, Nigerians rest. So yeah, rest. Some of you are still taking the mat on your head. So rest. They've settled it. But, ah, now, and it's not just now. Like, I mean, some Nigerian universities, I think we really need to do better. I won't say more than that. Taking the final story on Pop Shop for today. Um, unfortunately, this is a sad one. Uh, I, I want to talk about uh, how Nollywood actor Junior Pope's death shattered Nollywood and the whole drama surrounding it. Uh, so over the week as well, um, I mean, news made waves of popular Nollywood actor Junior Pope uh, who passed away uh, in something that could have been preventable it was really a sad one because I mean I remember I was doing something very important and then I saw a picture and I'm always very very scared because anytime I just see a picture on social media uh, particularly a celebrity's picture I'm like hey kilo to shell. I just hope this is not a bad news but unfortunately that particular day it turned out that it was a bad news uh, I need to face that uh, Junior Pope uh, drowned I mean while on his way to shoot a movie and the movie title was The Other Side of Life. I mean, the irony of life, you can imagine. But it's really, really a sad one because this is one actor that I respect, I admire, I love so much. I mean, he's been without scandal. I love the way he adores his family, he's family oriented. And it's quite sad because, I mean, his death could have been prevented. And everything surrounding his death is just really, really weird and strange. A day, Maybe I think a day to, uh, to his death, um, while he was on his way to the movie set, he made a video while he was actually on the boat without life jacket. And, you know, he was talking about how I uh, scared uh, telling the, the boat uh, pilot to, you know, take it easy with the speed and that he has three sons that he would, you know, he would raise them. He, he wants to raise his children. But uh, I think the following day while on his way back, um, he drowned with some other member, uh, other members of the crew members, with some other crew members, I think three, four, thereabouts. Um, it's really, really sad, to be honest. In fact, as of now, it's still very, very hard to believe that uh, it passed. And of course, uh, judging by what we saw, uh, the clips we saw on social media, we felt this was something that could have been prevented because at a point in time, they said, oh, thank goodness. Uh, I think there's, there's a bit of life within him. He's not dead. And, you know, uh, they said they were supposed to take him to a herbalist to do some rituals. And from then, they took him to the hospital, but he didn't make it. You know, with the whole crowd here, yeah, nobody could do CPR. And I really, really hope that Nigerians can learn from it. Maybe, just maybe, a simple CPR would have saved his life. Even with the crowd surrounding him there. I mean, he was already choking. It was just... Uh, this... I just... There are so many lessons to learn from Junior Pope's death. Uh, I mean, first of all, when something bad happens, we're always very, very quick to bring our phones and then make a video should really i mean somebody's lying down there somebody needs help and the first thing that we can think of is to bring our phone and shoot content you see what is killing us content creation we are still coming there maybe one of these days we're going to talk about that but that's you know that's is that's aside uh, it's it's really really sad to be honest and uh, you know as uh, a lot of dramas some people even from that unfortunate incident started to you know chase clouds uh, you know, somebody actually posted a video of the deceased and a lot of people tongue lashed him. Come on, we're not supposed to do that. And to be very honest, that was disrespectful. Although he later came out to apologize, it's okay. Uh, we forgive you. Um, it, it, it's really sad. And uh, there's also been this conversation around them having to bury him beside the river because he died by water. And I'm like, hmm. Nigerians. But, I mean, the family has... 
actually uh, refused to do that. Uh, at the point in time, we also heard that a crew member was uh, buried beside the river. Uh, but I mean, fortunately, the governor of our state waded into the situation and, you know, the body was exhumed and it's been taken to a uh, uh, hometown for proper burial. It, it's sad. It's sad. I, I don't want to really state so much on this story, but it's really, really a painful thing. But at the end of the day, I think the closure for me was when uh, a celebrity, a socialite, popularly known as E Money, came out to say, okay, uh, is actually going to uh, single handedly, uh, you know, make Junior Pope's children his own children. So, I mean, whatever thing they need, whatever scholarship, I mean, Junior Pope's children have, you know, completely become his responsibility. And I think this is really, really uh, commendable. Big, big shout out to Imoni uh, for this. And that's about it today on Pop Shop. I really hope that you've been entertained with some of the stories that I've been able to share with you today. Don't worry, we still have more coming your way. Hopefully next week, same time, uh, same station, we're going to do this again. I remain the Radio Fabulous. You can call me Shay Fabs. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.